What's up everyone, I'm Ken from the Kicker Tech Force and today we're in the Kicker World Headquarters. We're gonna be installing a huge marine audio system into this boat that you see behind me. Uh, this boat does have some aftermarket audio already installed, but the owner wanted to switch things up a little bit, so we're gonna go big on it. We're gonna upgrade him to a huge Kicker system consisting of three pair of our RGB lit six and a half inch coaxes, along with two 10 inch marine subwoofers, the KM10s. And then we have our flagship head unit, the KMC5, along with the KRC55 wired remote control. We're gonna put that in there for them. Obviously we have all the installation components that we're gonna use. So our new wiring kits, our marine RCA cables, our distribution blocks, etc. And then on the wakeboard tower, we're gonna be putting two pair of our nine inch KMTC horn loaded compression drivers. To power everything, we're gonna use the KXMA 800.5 amplifier and then the KXMA 1200.2 amplifier on those marine tower cans. So stick around for that. We are gonna be breaking this video up into many different pieces. So if there's a particular part that you wanna watch, we do have that separate. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing, stay tuned. So before you actually purchase even your first piece of hardware, you need to ask yourself some very important questions. What do you want out of this system? What are your wants, your needs? So is this just a party boat and you just need the people inside the interior of the boat to be able to hear the audio? Or is it maybe a wakeboarding boat with a tower like this where you want the skier or the wakeboarder to be able to hear the audio cleanly? Maybe it's a sandbar a party boat and you want the entire sandbar to be able to hear your audio. How much bass are you looking for? So these are some very important questions that you need to ask yourself and then be able to answer before you go out and purchase hardware. Um, if you're gonna be doing some drop-in fitment and just replacing some OEM speakers that are there, or do you wanna add additional speakers and you actually need to cut holes in the fiberglass? What kind of room are you working with? If you wanna fit 12, 12 inch subwoofers, that's great, but do you have the actual real estate of the fiberglass to be able to do that reasonably? Uh, maybe it's just an eight inch full range that you need to be able to cut. Do you have that space there? So make sure you measure all your wire lengths um, so you can obviously purchase the right amount of wire, but then you can think about where you're gonna mount the amplifiers. Mount those as close as you can to the battery, uh, but then how much speaker wire do you need? How much power wire do you need? Lay out your entire system installation and then uh, plan out what pieces of hardware fit your particular needs. So if a particular system, say system X, suits your needs but doesn't really fit in the budget, ask yourself, can you do this in stages? Maybe you can upgrade the interior cabin speakers first with an amplifier, and then later when the budget warrants it, you can add the subwoofer and you can add the subwoofer amplifier after that. In order to install all that great new kicker audio, we need to uninstall all the old stuff first. So we're gonna uninstall the two amplifiers you see behind me, and we're also going to make sure that we disconnect battery power before we start. And in addition, we're, we've decided to upgrade the electrical system in this boat. So we've, we're gonna remove the two factory batteries to make room for the four excess power batteries. This is where the aftermarket audio amplifiers are already installed and we're gonna install our stuff in the same spot. Um, so the main power from the battery does come in here to this power distribution. We're gonna put in all new kicker power distribution. So we're gonna disconnect all of this and then of course disconnect power and ground and then all this, the speaker wires from the two amplifiers you see here. So when mounting amplifiers in a boat, you need to plan out where you're gonna mount these. You want them out of the elements, of course, somewhere where they're not gonna get rained on or even sprayed with a hose when you're washing down your boat. Um, even though the Marine's certified, you do wanna limit their exposure as best as you possibly can. On this particular install, we were lucky enough to have an ABS board that the other amplifiers are mounted to, so we are gonna try and reuse that. If your boat doesn't come with an ABS board that had that already set, it's very, very easy to purchase. We're using half inch thick ABS covered with an automotive grade carpet. Um, and then you can mount your power distribution, your amplifiers to it. And in this case, we also had an AC power uh, to recharge the battery. So if the boat is up next to the pier, you can plug it in to recharge the batteries. We're gonna reuse that and have that on this board as well. I think I've pretty much got the layout how I'd like. I think I'm gonna have the power and ground distribution box up here. So the red is gonna be ABYC Coast Guard compliant colors for power. And then the yellow is gonna be for ground. Uh, if you'll note, this is our power distribution box. You can actually snap off any of the windows here, even on each side to allow your wire to come in. And then your ring trommel will go onto one of these studs. You'll see on the red one, the studs are actually spaced up a little bit. That's gonna make room for our new MRBF fuses. And on the ground one, same idea, you can break off the windows, but you can see here, it's just straight studs. So you put your ring terminals in and they'll all be connected together to ground. So I think I'm gonna have one mounted here, one mounted roughly here. So power and ground would come in this way from the batteries. And then we'll have our grounds go out this way, this way, they'll all both meet in the middle, probably dive down this hole, which then I can have them pop out of these holes here for the amplifiers. 
This is the KXMA1202, which will power our four nine inch marine tower cans. And this is the KXMA800.5, which will power the six coaxial speakers along with the two 10 inch subwoofers. And then over here, we do have the battery charger. Um, this is designed to plug into a wall when the boat is up next to the pier to recharge the battery banks. This was already here, but we're gonna go ahead and keep using that and that will mount right here in this location. So now that we have our power distribution actually mounted to the panel, I did wanna show you this power distribution in closer detail. So if you unscrew this colored knob at the top and this whole panel pulls off, from there you have all your different studs you can connect your ring terminals to. This would be the input from the battery. This would be the, the ground from the battery. And then you get three other studs that you can mount our brand new MRBF fuses on it. So those are gonna look like this. These fuses are really, really cool because they're completely sealed from the exterior environment. So if this fuse were to pop, it wouldn't ignite any gases that might uh, share the same compartment with the fuse distribution block. So fuse goes on top, and of course ring terminal on top of that, and then your nut back on top and tighten it up. Then you can use a set of pliers to snap off the panel to allow the ring terminal to pass through. Use a heat gun to heat shrink your connection. Um, you will see this actually does have adhesive inside of it. So this is marine quality stuff. So now that we have our power wires connected from our power distribution, I did want to run them through the holes to the amplifiers and strip off the insulation a little bit. Um, if you wanted to run TechFlex on, and cover up the power wires and make them look nice, of course you could certainly do that. I would advise that you use the red and yellow TechFlex so you can maintain those, those uh, US Coast Guard and ABYC compliances. Um, and then additionally, the Kicker Marine amplifiers have a tab inside the terminal that pushes down on the wire strands itself. So it's kind of similar to a wire ferrule. So you can go ahead and insert the copper strands right into the amplifier without the need for um, you know, something intermediary between that. So now we're getting our amp boards wired up. We have all of the speaker wire and six conductor RGB wire run throughout the boat. And they run to this board here, which has our amplifiers mounted on it. You see the red and yellow four gauge power. We have the remote run, the RCAs are run and they're connected to the amplifier. And now it's time to connect all the RGB wires. So if you look there on the back of the board, the back left section, you can see all of those RGB wires and you may be thinking, oh my gosh, that's a lot of wire. Well, in truth, it is. But remember, we have six coaxial speakers. We have four cans. Even the head unit has an RGB ring on it. So it all needs to run to the KMLC lighting controller. And all of those wires, they actually just all connect in parallel. So all the reds are together, all the blues are together. So though it looks like a lot of wires, and, and, and it is, it's actually very, very easy to connect. You'd wire all of those up to this little dongle that's included with the KMLC lighting controller. So all the blues go to the blue wire, all the greens to the green wire, etc. This will plug directly into the KMLC uh, lighting receiver. So this little part right here with heat shrink around it, that's all there is to it. That's the receiver. So the remote control signals through radio frequency and RF frequency to this receiver. Plugs in like this. And now you can choose up to 20 different colors and 19 different modes to scroll through those colors, whatever suits your fancy. And on the other side, it's just power and ground. Now think about how you want to wire this power and ground. Do you want it to run directly to the battery so you can run, um, you know, you can run your lights with the, the boat off completely or off the key ignition if you only want it to run while the boat is actually running and the alternator spinning? That's up to your call. Um, do make sure you put a small fuse on this, maybe a five amp fuse or whatever, and that'll be plenty even for all those LEDs. So let's go ahead and get all this stuff wired up. One of the most common overlooked aspects of building a marine audio system is the electrical system. In this particular installation, we're gonna be installing two KXMA amplifiers. They're very high power. They're gonna pull a lot of juice from the electrical system of the boat. In some installation, you might add four or five amplifiers. And of course, that power has to come from somewhere. We want all that loud audio. That power has to come from the batteries on the boat as well as the alternator on the boat. 
Um, so is your factory electrical system up to the task? That's something that you need to review before you go and plan out the entire installation. Um, most common way to overcome electrical system shortages is by adding extra batteries. So you may have one or two batteries as a starting battery, so you can use it to start and stop the boat, of course, and then uh, a bank of auxiliary batteries that you can have on a battery isolator. Excess Power has provided us with four of their AGM marine cell batteries that we're gonna install in here. So we're gonna have one of the batteries isolated from the other three. So if the owner runs down the other three playing the system uh, very, very loud for a long period of time, he's not gonna be stranded on that sandbar. So you can use this switch He'll flip it over to the starting battery. He'll be able to start his boat and then the alternator on the battery will recharge all four. So we've already started the process of replacing all the batteries in the boat and adding a couple additional batteries to the stereo system. So we've made a framework down on the bottom of the boat out of expanded PVC, which is a plastic material. That's not gonna deteriorate when it gets wet. We've also installed the batteries in these plastic battery boxes. These boxes are there to contain any acid that may spill from the batteries if they boil over. The covers on the battery boxes also help prevent against anything from shorting across the tops of the battery should it fall into the well with the batteries. We're gonna take wires, we're gonna jump them between these three batteries, tying them all together in parallel. This is gonna give us many, many hours of playing times with the audio system before the batteries actually go down. When the batteries do go down, we'll still be able to start the boat with this battery, which will be the starting battery, which is on a completely separate circuit, so it will not drain with the audio system while you're playing it at the beach or out on the water, where you happen to wanna to listen to your music. So let's go ahead and let's tie all three of these batteries into parallel. Then we'll jump into wiring this battery and those three into the distribution box. Here at Kicker, we wanna make sure you connect all your marine audio components properly. So we offer these really, really nice four, eight, and one-aught gauge ring terminals complete with heat shrink. These terminals are really nice. They're very thick, very heavy quality. They're corrosion resistant, and they've got pre-cut lengths of heat shrink, which once you crimp it to the wire, apply a little bit of heat and that'll make a perfect connection and it's gonna look great too. When you run the wires to the batteries, we'll wanna make sure we have enough loop in the wires that this cover will go back on. You got two different places the wire can exit from each of the terminals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the wires, we're just gonna make a loop of wire down next to the battery and then come back up. This will be the length of wires we need for all the positive and negatives to tie all three batteries together. We've got a good set of wire cutters and strippers. This makes the job really easy. Simply cut the wire. We'll strip a little bit of the insulation off of the end. So now we have the wire ready to go into the connector. Now these connectors can be a challenge to crimp. There's several different methods you can use for crimping these connectors, and it doesn't matter which one you use as long as you've got a good tight connection. What we're gonna use is this nice little set of hydraulic crimpers. You can get these online anywhere from 30 to $80, depending on how many different jaws you need, but they make a really nice, clean, really secure crimp. And once again, they're not that large and they're not that expensive. So if you do a lot of work with one odd or four gauge wire, I suggest you invest in a set of these. They're gonna make your life much easier. So I'll show you how they work. We've got a little release here for the hydraulic mechanism. We'll tighten that up. We're gonna take our terminal, we're gonna put it into the jaws of the crimpers, and we're gonna tighten it up just enough to hold the connector in place. You notice we've got the connector oriented the way we want it. We'll then take this four gauge wire, get as many strands as you can inside of the opening. And it's not crucial you get every single one of them, but as many as you can. And then we'll start pushing the handle to crimp the connection. Once you got it tight, release the hydraulics. Now you have a really secure, nice looking connection that we're gonna top off with a little bit of heat shrink, to cover up the end. So the heat shrink will go right over the end of the wire. We'll heat that up with a heat gun and that's gonna look like a professional connection. Fact. It'll look just like that. This boat comes equipped with a factory ANL fuse holder, which is what we see right here. This is the fuse holder that supplied the main battery lead to the two amplifiers. This is perfectly adequate for car audio, but it's not a sealed fuse rated for marine use. So we're gonna take this fuse holder completely out, and then this is a circuit breaker that goes to the main fuse panel. We'll connect it back over to the main battery post, and then our amplifiers will tie from this post over here on the batteries 
back over to the amplifiers with its inline fuse holder right here. So that's gonna be completely safe, completely marine certified. As you can see, we have the locking nut off of the stud and you notice the corrosion around this ring terminal. That is exactly why we wanna make sure we use marine certified insulation components. So as you can see, we got this electrical system upgrade just about complete on this boat. We've added four of the XS powered gel cell sealed batteries. So we have plenty of power and plenty of safety for this upgrade. These batteries are divided up into two separate groups. You have your main starting battery, which is only used to start the boat. You have your three house batteries, which will operate all the accessories on the boat. And of course, the audio system. We've actually connected our one aught feed to the amplifiers via this inline MRBF fuse holder. So we know how to have a good, safe connection that's corrosion free and it's fused right at the battery terminal. This boat comes equipped with a couple crucial electrical components. One is this battery switch. This switch will allow you to engage one battery, the other battery, or both batteries at the same time to ensure you always have one battery that's charged, ready to start the boat. The other safety feature that this boat has is a circuit breaker to ensure if anything does become shorted, it will not catch the boat on fire. We've also added this electronic Blue Seas battery isolator that's gonna make sure all the batteries are charged their full potential all the time when the boat's running or when it's plugged into shore power. Speaker polarity is very important. If your speakers are wired out of polarity or what is known as out of phase, the bass response is gonna be canceled because one speaker is pushing and one speaker is pulling. You want both speakers traveling outward at the same time and inward at the same time for proper sound quality, imaging, and staging. So here's a cool little installer tip. If you got a bunch of wires and you know they're connected to speakers, but you don't know which wire it connects to which, you can use a nine volt battery to test it. All you have to do is touch the nine volt battery to two wires, the positive and negative. If you heard that, that made a noise. That means these two wires go to that particular speaker. These two wires go to the other speaker. If I needed to know polarity, we know that the negative striped wire, which I have here, is connected to the negative on the speaker. If I touch it to the negative on the battery and the other wire to the positive, by observing the speaker, the speaker should move out rather than back in. That's how you know you have the polarity correct. And just to make sure, let's test the other two speaker wires to see if that makes a popping noise to the other two, which it does. Now we know these two speaker wires go to one pair of speakers. These two wires go to the other pair of speakers on the wake tower. All we have to do is connect them to the amplifier and we're good to go. So as you can see, we've got the amplifiers mounted and properly wired. We know the polarities are correct on all the speakers and we know they're connected to the right spots on the amplifiers. Once we get the system turned on, the last thing we want to do is to make sure we tune the amplifiers. You want to properly set the high and low pass crossovers for each of the sets of speakers and set the gain accurately so the gain does not clip prematurely on the amplifier causing damage to the speakers. You can refer to some of the other kicker videos on gain setting and crossover setting to do this properly. So let's get this thing tuned and let's go out and enjoy this boat. Now it's time to install the coaxial speakers into the boat. We're gonna use the KM65 Marine speaker from Kicker and we're gonna replace the speakers that are already in here. I wanted to show you a couple of different things that make the KM65 Marine speaker different from Kicker's car audio speakers. So if we pull the grill off, first and foremost, you can see that the tweeter is actually suspended above the cone. So the tweeter is using these legs here to suspend itself and you don't see a tweeter post that goes down through the dust cap of the speaker. So if once installed in the boat, the water splashes on the front of it, it's completely waterproof. You don't have to worry about water getting down into the actual motor of the speaker. And if I flip the speaker around on the rear, you can see we have quite a bit different connections than you have on a typical car audio speaker. You have obviously the speaker wire with a waterproof style fitting, and then you have the RGB lighting, which then runs up and then into the legs of the tweeter that hold the tweeter in place. Um, additionally, the cone itself is sprayed with reflective coating to help that RGB lighting really pop and spread evenly throughout the cone. We really wanted to go over the top of the lighting in this installation. So in addition to the RGB lighting built into the speaker, we're gonna use our new RGB trim rings along with it. So this is the six and a half inch version of the trim ring. Uh, they are sold in pairs on the six and a half inch size. So you can see that we'd have the RGB lighting that's gonna match exactly with the RGB that's already built into the KM65. 
The wiring of it, as you can see, is exactly the same as what you'll find on the KM65. So you can just wire each of these colors in parallel and then the RGB controller, the KMLC, would control the color and you'll get the exact same shade of your preferred color in this install. Let's get busy. So I've ran the six conductor RGB wire to all the locations in the boat that are gonna have one of the six and a half inch coaxial speakers. So the six conductor wire is gonna feature the 18 gauge RGB connections that you see here, and then two 16 gauge speaker wires. Uh, the two white ones here, one does have a, a black stripe on it to denote uh, you know, polarity on that. I'll take a look at the actual signal wires itself or where the speaker wire connection. So they do come pre-installed with these spade terminals and we do include some female spade connections that you can either crimp onto the wire that you have already run through the boat or whatever you, you need to do that. On top of that, we also include this little box right here. And this little box is designed for that connection to go inside. So you go ahead and make your spade terminal connections like so, and then you would trap that connection inside this. So what that does is it helps seal off water or anything from that, that spade connection. So yes, this does install inside the hull of the boat. All the wiring would be behind the speaker. And obviously, hopefully no wire, uh, water gets back there, but if it does, you're covered. So just another way that we help marinize all your connections. Now in this particular install, we've actually chosen to forego the spade connectors altogether. We're actually gonna cut these off and we're gonna use a heat shrink style butt connector. So this butt connector here, whoop, this butt connector here, is gonna go ahead and go onto these connections and then you can use a heat gun or some source of heat um, to melt the actual insulation around this and it'll melt to a watertight connection. Now you might be thinking, Ken, why are you using butt connectors and you're not soldering or something like that? Well, interesting point. The American Boat and Yacht Council dictates that at the end of any wire termination, it must be a mechanical crimp connection, not a solder joint. So we are compliant with the American Boat and Yacht Council and the Coast Guard uh, regulations. So we are gonna go ahead and use the crimp connection here. Um, my guess, the reason why they do that is when you solder a connection, that connection generally becomes pretty brittle. So in a, an environment like a boat or a vehicle where vibrations are pretty heavy, uh, they worry about that solder joint cracking. So that's probably uh, why we go with the crimp instead. And if you look at even on a car, all the factory connections that come from the, the factory, those are all crimps too. All Every single one of those pins that plug into a BCM harness or what have you, those are all crimps. Um, so crimp, as long as you're using the proper tools and you actually pay attention when you're making your crimp, um, you know they're gonna last for many, many years to come. I did wanna give you one quick tip about running wires through a boat. Generally, you're gonna have your amplifiers mounted on one side of the boat. And of course, you're gonna have some speakers on both sides of the boat. Um, so if you need to run wires from one side of the boat to the other, it's not like a car where you can just maybe run them underneath the carpet. Um, you generally have to run all the way up one side and then up to the bow of the boat and then back down the other side, or of course, do the reverse down at the stern of the boat. Um, so let me give you an easy quick tip about how to take a lot of these seats apart. Every boat is a little bit different, but generally a lot of them will follow the same guidelines. So you can pop the seat bottom loose and you think, well, great, you can get into that storage compartment area. Um, and that does help you quite a bit. But if we're talking about, especially up by the bow, where you can maybe get in at one speaker location here and up here, and then maybe the other speaker location here. Unfortunately, the wires actually run way up here. So being able to tie your wires up uh, in a professional manner, uh, it's almost impossible even given the holes that we have here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to take this particular seat back apart. Um, first and foremost, you're gonna need to reach underneath here and you feel around for some bolts. On this particular one, it was a bolt that was about this size. I believe it's about a 10 millimeter bolt. And there was one in each bottom corner. Some boats have no bolts. Some of them might have three. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but generally you'll be able to feel them back with your hands. And then every single one of them pretty much comes out in the same way. You're gonna hit up off the little hooks that are in the back and it pops out. So now that you see both the hooks as well as the back of the seat, and now you have a ton more access to be able to reach these wires in a spot that you previously could not access without taking the seat back off. So the speaker comes with one already installed. The RGB ring comes with this one. However, if you note the back of it, it's hollowed out. You can't really stick it to that.
So each one of these butt connections, the dead center of it, it has kind of like a little, uh, a little bump out or a loop. And you have to make sure that your crimpers are facing the same way. And of course you don't crush that loop in the center. Now we're going to go ahead and use the heat gun to heat shrink all of our butt connections we just made. I did want to point out, go ahead and put something, something down on the seat before you do this. This heat gun obviously does get very hot. And if you were to disform the seat in any way, I mean, that is one heck of a, a bit of damage. So quite a high price tag on it. So just take two seconds to, you know, an ounce of protection uh, to do that. So I do recommend that you use just a regular standard screwdriver for this installation. Uh, when you're actually screwing your speakers in, obviously, number one, uh, it's a lot easier to control the amount of power you're exerting there. So the amount of torque, you don't end up cracking the grill or stripping out uh, the backing that you're screwing into. And then of course, you don't accidentally uh, you know, stab a hole through the surround or something like that. So a lot of us have been there before. When it comes to just putting these four screws in, classic screwdriver does the job. Now it's time to install the wakeboard tower cans. We're gonna remove the cans that are already up here and we're gonna install four nine inch KMTC compression horn driver cans in their place. Now those cans do come pre-lit with RGB lighting. So we're gonna to have to run the RGB wires through the wakeboard tower as well. And I'll show you guys how to do that. But first, let's remove these old cans. So it looks like the original speaker wires were actually crimped in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll clip those loose and we'll be good to go. So when we're working on this boat, we're gonna put the new tower speakers in. We've gotta run new wires because we're gonna add LEDs, which it didn't initially have. But to do that, we're having to pull out all the factory wiring because it's actually taking up all the room we need to run our LED and speaker wire. So what we've done is we've gutted the tower and if you notice on this particular boat, they've run the wires for all the, the tower components, the speakers and the lights through these two holes. What they didn't do is they didn't put any grommets in. So obviously this is the diameter grommet we need. It's got to fit in that hole. So we need to enlarge that hole. Now, conventionally you take a drill bit and drill it in, which would be fine, but we don't have a drill bit big enough for that three quarter inch grommet. This is called a unibit. This is great if you're going to enlarge a smaller hole, but one thing you have to be careful with any unibit, anytime you drill into a tower, you wanna to make sure there's no wires behind that this can catch in and really make a mess of things. So once you get the hole started, if it's still not big enough, but if this goes all the way through, if the bar is smaller, that's not gonna allow you to drill to the base because it's gonna come out the other side, which we definitely don't want. You might need to go to a bigger unibit that's got a, a, a larger step and if that's still not enough, they make another great tool, which is a flat bottom large unit tip. So then you can actually drill in without having to worry about it coming out the backside. So it's always nice to be prepared with your arsenal with the right tools. And once again, always use a grommet when you're running speaker wire through metal of any kind, whether it's aluminum or steel or whatever it happens to be, safety first. So we decided to mount the tower speakers on this rear bar facing towards the outside. So we're gonna place the bracket in place. I've already gone through and checked for the little convertible top that fits over here, that all the straps are gonna fit through. The bracket's not gonna be in its way. So we're gonna set this to an appropriate height. We're gonna mark where the center of the hole should be. 
Now we'll go back in and drill that hole, put a wire grommet in and run the wire up through the bar. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So I've got a box place below to catch some of the aluminum shavings from drilling out the hole. That way it doesn't get stuck in the carpet and it's a lot less, a lot less mess to clean up later. All right, so we got everything we need to put the bracket up on the bar. We got the main bracket itself with the wire harness and the quick release. We've also got the cap. We've got the proper size Allen wrench. And the nice thing about these caps, they'll fit on many different sizes of bars from one and a half to three and an eighth inches. So they come with several different sizes of screws. You may have to try different screws till you get the right length. You want enough thread that it's got a good bite to it, but not too long that you cannot tighten it up on the bar. So we already know with these bars, we're gonna use the medium size stainless steel screws. The other thing you wanna make sure of is when you're putting stainless steel screws into stainless steel, you have to use anti-seize. That's these little packets that come with the speakers. You wanna put this on the threads. You don't have to use a whole lot, but make sure you get enough on the threads that it's not gonna cause the threads to bind and completely lock them up because then you've gotta cut the brackets to get them off. Make sure you keep this stuff off yourself. It's messy, it gets on everything, and it doesn't come off. So be careful with this stuff. Once you get the first one started, the other three are easy. When you tighten up these brackets, you wanna make sure that you don't tighten one side down farther than the other one. It's gonna look kinda of awkward and it won't tighten as well. So make sure that you got a fairly even spacing on both sides of these bolts when you tighten them down. The other thing you may notice is we've taken care to line up the kicker logos. That's always important. We're not gonna fully tighten these brackets. Once we put the speakers on, we'll adjust them to their final resting place. That way we know the speakers are aimed in the proper position. The nice thing about these brackets, the speakers just slide on. They make all the power connections for the LEDs and the power connections for the speakers, but you can rotate them 359 degrees and you have the capability of rotating this bracket in or out to focus the speakers exactly where you want. So I've had to put an extension wire on this speaker lead to get it to feed out the top of the bar. I've staggered where these crimps are done. And once again, these are waterproof heat shrink crimps I've staggered them, that way you're not trying to cram four of those connectors through this little hole at one time. It's gonna make it a lot easier on the installation. So let's feed this wire through. It's gonna come out the top and then I'll feed it back across to the other bar. Now we have this loop of wire here. We've got this bar and bolt it. We're gonna pull this apart so we have enough room to tuck these wires inside, then we can bolt it back together. Since this is solid, we can't run wires between these two points. You ready? Yep. All right. As you can see, we already have this tower can wired and mounted in place. Now remember, when you put these brackets on, make sure you leave them a little bit loose so you can adjust the angle. So this one is completely finished. We go back over here, we've just got the bracket mounted for this speaker. To put the speaker on, you wanna take off these little locking nuts, drop them on the ground, pull the bar off, then the speaker merely slides into place. We have the locking bar in place. Now we need to put the nuts in place. Make sure you put anti-seize on these nuts as well to prevent them from sticking. Now that you got the locking nuts roughly finger tight, you've got these two arms here which will lock the speaker in place. With these two locking levers loosened, I can rotate that speaker up to 359 degrees without chance of damaging the wiring. 
Once I get it aimed where I want it, I merely lock these bars down. Now that speaker's solid, it's not gonna go anywhere. So as you can see, we got the two pair of KMTC9s mounted in white. Now this is a nine inch driver with a compression driver that has a one and three quarter inch diaphragm on the back. They're extremely loud, extremely efficient. They're gonna project that sound back to our wakeboarder or back to the beach, wherever the party happens to be. Now, these are pretty awesome because with this Kicker KML CW, we have this remote control. I have full color LED lighting and the speakers that I can set to pretty much any color or any pattern I want. That makes these really fun at night. Now, if the speakers are not aimed properly, we can loosen up these two tabs. We can rotate this speaker up to 359 degrees. Why 359? So you don't twist it around, tear the wires out of the tower but you can adjust these to fire just about anywhere. If you wanna take these pods completely off for storage, take these two thumb screws off and make sure you always have a good coating of anti-seize so they don't jam on top of the locking bolts. Take these two screws off and this entire assembly will slide out of its socket. It'll disconnect the wires and undock the speaker all at the same time. These things sound great, they look great, and if you prefer, they do come in black. Now it's time to install the subwoofers. As you can see, we have one 10 inch installed subwoofer already, but we're gonna to upgrade to two 10 inch subwoofers. We're gonna be using the KM10 subwoofer. So this particular subwoofer here actually does have a sealed enclosure behind it. So we're gonna install the KM10 four ohm single voice coil subwoofer here. And then we're actually gonna add a second 10 inch subwoofer right over here. And that's gonna be the KMF subwoofer. So the difference between those is the KM10 is meant for sealed or vented enclosures, an actual enclosure behind it. The KMF is meant for free air designs. So if you're actually just gonna cut a new hole in a fiberglass panel and use the, uh, the air in the entire storage compartment, it's essentially a free air design. You want to use a subwoofer that's designed for that application, and that's what we're gonna do here. All right. So this is the location we've decided to mount the second 10 inch subwoofer. This is an open baffle, or what we call free air, infinite baffle. So that means that there's not a sealed enclosure behind it like we have on the speaker that's underneath the steering column. So this is gonna get an infinite baffle woofer, but it's got a tighter mechanical suspension because it doesn't have an enclosure to control it. So I've taped off the front of this area. I already know the woofer is gonna fit. I've got the template, which has been punched out from the cardboard box it came in. When we set this template in, you see it's gonna fit very nicely top to bottom. So all we have to do is hold the template, mark the hole, and then we do a very simple task of cutting out the fiberglass, and that's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll show you that in a minute. So we're ready to cut the hole for the 10 inch woofer we're gonna install inside the seat pedestal. We've already made sure there's no wires in the backside that we're gonna interfere with. We've taped the surface off so we don't scratch it, and we can make our marker lines so we know what hole to cut. So now we're ready to actually cut the fiberglass. Gotta go over a few safety issues first. First thing you wanna make sure is that you can see what you're doing. So when you get old, you have to have reading glasses. Now, these are not acceptable safety glasses, so we're gonna put on another set of safety glasses so we don't get fiberglass in our eyes. The last thing we need to do is make sure you don't inhale any of the fiberglass. So we're gonna put on this breathing mask to make sure that we don't have any of this fiberglass in our lungs. Now that we got this all ready to go, we can drill a hole through the fiberglass with a standard drill bit. Make sure you go inside the hole. Now we've got our pilot hole started, we can now cut the fiberglass. I'm gonna use an air saw, but if you have a jigsaw or a hand saw, it'd be a lot longer, but it can be done. So we're gonna use this saw with a very fine tooth blade so we can cut through the fiberglass without chipping it. So without any uh, further delay, let's start cutting a hole for a woofer. Did I mention this might take a while? So don't get in a hurry. You know, it fits good when you don't have to use screws to hold it in. So we got our infinite baffle or free air 10 inch kicker marine woofer. We have our LED speaker grill. We have our backing plate that we made to make sure the woofer has plenty of support. And we have an LED speaker ring. So getting these all lined up is a little bit of a challenge, but I think we can handle it. So let's go ahead and start putting it all together.
make sure that this goes underneath. I'll get my fat little fingers in here and get these covers off. I always start one screw. And then do an opposing screw. So as we're screwing the woofer screws in, we're gonna make sure we push on the back plate that we made to support the rear of the speaker and add added support to the fiberglass to make sure that the screw doesn't push out the panel. So we'll run it in tight and it did push it a little bit. So I'm gonna back the screw up. I'm gonna feel the panel till it goes back flush. Then when I tighten up the screw, that panel is in tight. So from the back side of the cabinet, as you can see, we have the woofer mounted, we've got the backing plate mounted, we've got the wire shrink wrapped and shrink wrap butt connectors to make sure it's as watertight as possible. If you notice on the speaker wire, the other thing we did is we installed a drip loop. This is to ensure the water, if it runs down the wire, doesn't travel right back up to the speaker terminals and cause it to short or to corrode. We've also used stainless steel hardware to ensure the hardware will not rust should it also get wet. So the original radio was a single din size radio that's mounted over here on the right side of the steering column. We went to the new kicker size radio, which is a four by five inch. So we had to build this custom pod to make sure the radio had a good place to sit. Now that we've got it all screwed into place and the radio screwed into the pod and the wires are not the bottom, go ahead and put the trim ring on. We'll pull the plastic off the knob, wipe the dust off. Now all we have to do is wire it up from underneath and we'll be ready to tune it up and see how it sounds. We have our KMC5 head unit installed, and I wanted to walk you through a couple of the features of this. First and foremost, this has a six channel, true class D amplifier built into it. We're talking 40 watts RMS by six. So channels one through four, you can control as zone one, and channels five and six, you can have a separate zone two. So if you wanted to have the first four channels power the interior speakers of the boat, and maybe channels five and six, some speakers down in the sleeper cabin, or whatever possibilities that you might have, you can do that or if you just wanna have all six channels together working to power the interior speakers of the boat, you can do that too, your options. Again, that's 40 watts RMS by six with the KMC5. Uh, additionally, it is two ohm stable. So if you wanna wire some speakers in parallel, maybe two four ohm speakers together in parallel, you can run that directly off the head unit. So we advertise it as being two ohm stable. Again, six channels, two ohm stable each. You can power, in essence, 12 four ohm speakers together directly off the head unit without the need for an outboard amplifier. Um, so currently we're playing USB through the head unit. You can see that we do have the album artwork there. If you wanted to change the tracks, maybe you wanted to search through your thumb drive or whatever it might be, you're just gonna press menu one time and you can see what the first option there is browse. So you push the volume knob in and you can change to whatever track it might need, uh, whatever you desire on that. I wanted to talk a little bit about the volume control with the KMC5. So this is a dual zone capable head unit. So whether you're gonna do RCA outputs for a zone one and zone two, or you're gonna use that internal six channel amp for a zone one and zone two, there's some ways you can change the volume or you can control the volume separately. So you can do two different ways. It's called relative or absolute. So in a relative volume setting, the zone two control is going to change relative to whatever the main volume setting for, for channels one through four. So for example, if zone two were set to 15 and zone one were set for 10 and I increase the volume up another 10, so the towers would now be at 25 and those interior speakers would now be at 20. So they're relative to each other. Absolute means separate control for both. So if I grab the volume knob and then turn up the uh, volume for zone one, it doesn't affect zone two at all. And you can change that by pushing and holding the menu button. You can get into the menu adjustments. You scroll down to zone two and you can see there, you can turn zone two completely on or off. You can have control between the internal amplifier, uh, the six channel internal amplifier or the RCA outputs. But right here is what I was talking about, the absolute versus relative volume setting. So we're currently set for relative. So if we back out, you can see if I increase main volume a little bit, and if I push the volume knob in, 
you can see tower volume is separate. So let me set tower volume to four, and then we're gonna turn volume of the main zone up to three. But now if we go back to zone two, you can see it's at seven. So we are in relative setting. So if I go ahead and turn that down to zero, you can see zone two is back at four. So again, that's how the absolute and the relative volume settings for zone one and zone two work with the KMC5. There's also an RGB trim ring that runs all around the perimeter of the KMC5, and that connects to the KMLC lighting controller that we have in the boat. So it's gonna match the exact same colors as all the other speakers in the boat. So if you got the other speakers set to blue, this will match blue and match accordingly. In order to change source with the KMC5, you're gonna just tap the source button once, it'll bring up a list of all of them, and then you can use the volume knob to go ahead and scroll through all the different sources. So if I wanted to push FM, push the volume knob in, now we're on FM radio. So you can see that we have uh, AM and FM radio, weather band, the USB input, Bluetooth input, and auxiliary input, and Sirius XM built into this head unit. Um, but in addition, you can control all of this stuff, the volume, the source, the uh, song you're selecting, etc., from the wired remote control, the KRC55, that we in have installed in the rear of the boat. Let's go check that out. So picture this, you're in the water behind the boat, having a good time, maybe you're partying on the sandbar, and you wanna turn the music up or down, or maybe you wanna skip the track forward or back, but rather than crawling up out of the water all the way to the head unit up at the helm, and rather than having a wireless remote and a cup holder that might fall in the water or something like that, how do you do that? Well, you do it with something like this. This is a wired remote control. So this actually has a hardwired line up to the head unit at the helm that you can adjust the volume, uh, change track, you can have song information, etc. This is the one that came with the boat, and now we're gonna be putting in the KRC55 wired remote control. Now that's gonna connect up to the KMC5 head unit that we're putting up at the helm. So using this controller, we can look at our artist uh, song name, the artist uh, name, we can skip tracks forward, back, we can control almost everything that KMC5 can do remotely without even having to get out of the water. But first things first, let's go ahead and uh, pull this old one out. So we're getting ready to install the KRC55 wired remote control to the KMC5 head unit. Now we're also running our 25 foot long extension cable for that. We also have Y cables to connect multiple wired remote controls to one source unit if you choose. Maybe you want one on the port side and one on the starboard side of the boat. Maybe you want one down at the stern and then all the way up at the bow. It's completely your decision, but you can install multiple wired remote controls onto one source unit. One thing I did want to point out to you though, is pay attention to which gender side of the, the cable that you're running to those wired remote controls. So this is the connector that's on the output of the KRC55. So you want to make sure that you run this end of the 25 foot extension to plug into it. So here we are at the back of the boat. Originally from the factory, they'd installed a remote for the factory radio that gave you limited control. Since we're putting in the Kicker KMC5, it's got a lot more control and a lot more functions. That's why we're gonna add this Kicker KRC55 full color display remote control that pretty much mimics all the controls you have from the KMC5. We've run the DIN cable to the back and we've made this little adapter because the KMC55 is a little bit taller than the factory piece that was in here. The boat's got a little bit of a radius and we didn't want water to get in from the back side. So we made this nice little ABS quarter inch thick black plastic plate and I've rounded the back side of it very slightly so we get as close to as flush fit as possible. And then of course the gasket will seal up any extra small little gaps. So once we plug this KRC55 in, it's gonna be a watertight connection with this DIN cable. Screw this tight. And this cable does run back up the front to the KMC5. We'll go ahead and slide this back in the hole. Put the unit in place and then screw it down. Snap on the trim cover, pull off the little plastic protector. So we have the KRC55 installed in the back of the boat. The advantage there is if you were partying on the sandbar, you don't have to get out of the water, climb into the boat to be able to change the volume, switch the track, etc. You can see that we have a full color screen. Of course, we're on FM radio now. Um, so we have full color screen from the back. You can switch sources. You can just scroll through the sources with the volume up and down. And then when you get to the source you want, you would hit enter. And now you're on Bluetooth instead. Fortunately, I don't have a, a Bluetooth device paired to it. So you can control the volume just by pressing volume up and down, but you can actually control zone one and zone two separately, even using the KRC55. You hit the enter button, and now you're controlling zone two instead. So we're on six, 
But if I go back to the main volume, you can see we're only on two or three. So we're on that relative volume setting that we talked about earlier with the, K, the KMC5. You can also adjust a lot of the audio settings by pushing and holding the enter button. So you can see now we have all our audio menu, sub level control, bass, mid and treble, balance, etc. And you would scroll through those with the volume and then hit enter to actually enter into one of those. And then you can adjust the fader, for example, there. Um, and then back on out of that and you're back to FM. The KRC55 is only compatible with the KMC5 head unit. However, we do have the KRC12, which is compatible with the KMC234 and the 5 as well. You can check all those details out on kicker.com. And here we are, we've got the boat on the water, we set the gains on the KXMA amplifiers, we've wiped on all the surfaces and vacuumed out the floors. You know what, John, we went overboard on this install. We certainly did. There's only one thing left to do. Let's take this thing out and test it at speed, and then we get to give it back to the owner. And by the way, I'm driving, I got seniority. Let's do it.